welcome to tonight's asset protection webinar. We are pleased to have Travis Howard with us. Um, Travis has been, like Kendall said, a, a friend for multiple years, an incredible investor. He's got his ear to the ground in multiple markets, but he's he just in the trenches. And so looking forward to hear what he has to say. We're going to go through a couple quick little announcements, and then we'll turn the rest of the time over to him. Um, so whoops all right so there we go okay so um as most of you if you haven't watched most of these recordings are on our website uh we had bill danko on about a month ago um becoming richer than a millionaire what a great great gentleman he is um bob bloom talking about lawsuit prevention prevention um, Mike Koval was on a couple weeks ago. We had Toby Mathis last week talking about how to benefit from the CARES Act. If you haven't listened to some of these, the recordings are, are on on the website still. Obviously, we've got Travis tonight. I'll be teaching next night or next week. And then Steve Ruff, cost segregation, which if you own real estate, you really need to tune in that May, on that May 6th webinar. Um, but for next week, let me get, kind of go over what I'm gonna cover. When we talk asset protection, most of the time, we're talking about here's what a trust can do, here's what a corporation can do, here's what an LLC, and nobody, in 21 years, nobody has ever called me up and says, what can an LLC do for me? They're always asking the questions, how do I protect my home? How do I protect my rental properties? How do I protect my farm? How do I protect? So, so we're going to flip the whole asset protection, everything you know about it. We're going to flip it on its ear and talk about it asset by asset. And, and you'll see a lot of similarities, but there are some differences that are important. How to protect IRAs is very different than how to protect a bank account or a brokerage account or or your patents, trademarks. So we're going to hit that head on next week. I hope you join us. That will be a Tuesday night, 6.30, but asset by asset, asset protection. So it, it's a fun topic and we've ne I've never taught this. I'm spending a, a big part of my week this week preparing that for that, but I'm really excited to teach that. That is asset protection, how how I think the real people see it, not how the attorneys see it. So there's that. The upcoming events, we're still not sure about the Anaheim event. We, we have over 100 people registered for it, but whether this COVID thing is going to clear up by then, um, we have the reservation at the hotel. Um, we're still proceeding. If Disneyland opens on June 1st, we'll be there in Anaheim as well. If it doesn't, we'll probably postpone it. But Phoenix, I'm pretty sure in July, 120 degree weather in, in Phoenix ought to kill any virus out there. So we're proceeding with the July event regardless. And I'm you know, relatively certain we'll be there in Orlando as well. That's where we're we're bringing some of the best of the best instructors in the nation to teach. We give you a chance to sit down with them, um, private consultations. There's a sample agenda on our website, a lot of information. If you haven't attended the summit or haven't attended recently, in, encourage you to come back. And we're also not backing off on the cruise coming up. We haven't canceled it, but they we're also not actively promoting it. A lot of people have registered. I think we've got almost 60 people coming. I plan on, by December, I'll, I, I want to get out of here and go have a cruise. And so we've got a heck of a lineup. This is not everybody that's coming. These are people who have spoken in the past. For sure, Mike Koval will be there. For sure, Scott Estel will be there. We've got commitments from somebody from Anderson. I don't know who, but we, we'll we'll put together an incredible lineup just like we always do. So we're not backing off on the cruise, but again, I just calendar the dates, but kind of hold off. Everyone who has signed up has tell August 1st to be able to back out and get 100% of your money back. So, so we're proceeding with it. All right, and then before we turn time over to Travis, as always, there's always a quick little disclaimer. 
we can't give legal advice, we can't give tax advice, we don't give investment advice. We try to teach good, sound principles. How they apply to you is really something for you and your accountants, your your advisors to talk about. Um, and that's another reason why we do so many one-on-one -on -one consultations at the summit, is to give you a chance to sit down with the the best of the best that we know in the industry and, and go over and find application in your life. So with that, let's turn some time over to Travis. Travis, we, we've known each other for going on five years now. And uh -huh. for those of you that don't know Travis, he, he teaches on multiple stages. He teaches with Aaron Adams. He's taught with Legacy. He's taught you rich dad, poor dad people. Yep. And before that, I don't know how many companies you you taught with. But but besides being an incredible teacher, he runs the Charlotte operation for Alpine. He's in the trenches looking for the best deals, negotiating, buying. He knows how to uh, just about anything in real estate. And so we couldn't think of anyone that had their fingers, just hands in the pot. They're in, he's in the trenches, he's doing it. He's not just talking about it. Travis, we're delighted to hear what you have to say about finding, monetizing hottest real estate markets in the US. Travis, teach, teach our people how they can make money even in this screwed up market right now. So delighted to have you. Travis, thank you for your time. We'll turn it over to you and We'll be here in the background, Kendall and I, but we'll. Great. So, do you want to, Travis, let me ask you, do you want sure. to answer questions as we go along or do um, you want to save them up till I'll the end? Just of, wait, yeah, just wait till the end and if they have, have a couple questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Great. Okay, Travis, it's all yours. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Don, and thank you, Kendall. Uh, it's good to be with you guys. Looks like this is a nice crowd. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting there whenever I spoke to Don and Kendall ways back and none of this had happened at the time now it's kind of like well everybody just wants to have something to do right something to watch something to learn hopefully learn more than just watch but you know you just never know netflix is pretty good though i have to give it to them um so my name is travis um, i am actually located here in charlotte north carolina um, i have been uh in this industry in the business since 1999 uh, my partner, um, Aaron Adams, some of you guys may know him or have spoke to him or come to one of our events in Indianapolis, um, where you also can see Don and Kendall pretty much every month with us, as long as we're there, right? We're supposed to have this past one, this past weekend. Um, but we've, we've been doing the business for uh, 20 plus years. Um, and I want to just kind of give you a little, little down and dirty on what we are, who we are, what we do, how we do it. And I kind of go through and I'm going to also tell you guys a lot of what I think about what the market's doing, um, because I'm sure that's, you know, that's probably what most of you are wondering, like, what the heck am I supposed to do with what I got or what what happened to all the stuff I had? Now it's gone. What do I have with just what's left? Right. Whatever it may be. Um, I was talking to one of my buddies the other day and it's like this is that black swan event. If you don't know what a black swan event is, I would highly suggest go and Google it. Um, it's, it's a pretty short little explanation, but. I want you to read it so that you can kind of get the goosebumps. I was just like, oh, my God. So it's kind of different. Um, but I also get into the, the pieces that I look at on a daily basis in all of our different markets that we work. Uh, you know, we're, we're Alpine Capital Solutions. We're out of our headquarters or Indianapolis. Um, we have uh, different markets that we work. So I get to have a pulse and I travel a ton just like, you know, Don and Kendall do doing teaching or speaking engagements around around the country and so i get a really good good hearing and seeing of what's really happening and probably where you live in your market whether you're in california or me like like you're you know if you're in charlotte north carolina or if you're in uh, new jersey new york uh, washington state texas wherever uh, chicago you need to learn how to get the heartbeat of what's going on and right now um, i'll be honest with you the heartbeat it, you can't really feel it, but you know it's there. Um, I've I've had so many conversations. I, I went through 08, right? So I've I've lived all of the 08, 09, 10, uh, you know, banking debacle, all that stuff. And so it taught me a lot of lessons, and that's why I do ever almost I would say probably 85% of my business after uh, 2010. I did completely 180 degree turn 
and did it differently in the right way. So it puts me in a position so that I don't have to worry quite as much as so many other people out there. In fact, I can actually help other people, which is a great thing to be able to do. Um, so those are some of the things I'm gonna get to, to talk to you guys about over the next hour or so. Um, but uh, yeah, feel free if you have questions, uh, whatever it may be, you know, put them in the question area and we'll, we'll take care of those at the, at the end of the presentation. Um, so again, with Alpine Capital Solutions, uh, we started Alpine Capital Solutions back in 2005, January of 2005. So we've been around for 15 years. We are what you call a full turnkey resource. So we've bought a property, we fixed the property, and then we rent the property, and then we sell the property to someone like yourself, as an example. Um, I know some of you are, would be excited to be able to do that. Some of you don't care. I get it. Um, but I'm going to tell you and show you a little bit of how it's helped me have a great lifestyle and a great life, my wife, my kids, all that stuff. Um, so we're, we're currently, and I'm trying this for the first time, so please bear with me. I'm actually on my wife's computer. Actually, it's kind of our computer. It's our little knock around. Um, but it's really nice. And I'm going to see if I can get this little pen thing to work. I got to take me off of the screen or move. There we go. All right. So just to kind of give you an idea what markets we're in, we're in Indy, get red. Oh, look at that. We're in Indianapolis. We're in Kansas City. We are in Charlotte. We're in the southern tip of, or southern mid half of North Carolina. And most people don't really know where Charlotte is. It's kind of funny to me. We're the number two banking city in the country behind Manhattan. So it's, it's kind of funny to me. Um, so we've got Indy, Kansas City, and Charlotte, and also uh, one of our newest is actually Idaho, which is actually where uh, my partner spends half of his time, where Aaron lives half the time. Um, they have six kids, so they try to stay in one place if possible. So, you know, if possible. Um, so, again, what we do, full turnkey, um, and what we normally do is we're doing a lot of the uh, – Go to meetings, Zoom calls like what this is, so that you guys can kind of get to know us. Um, also, I've actually, and Don and I, years ago, whenever I met him, I actually bought some of his product. I've been on uh, their their uh, boat, I think two years ago, and it was fantastic. I got to meet some investors that already had properties with us. Um, I got to meet a lot of investors that had money um, and they didn't know what to do with it, so that's why they were there. Um, they didn't know how to cover their butt you know, legally wise, uh, entity wise with like what Don uh, does on a daily basis uh, in Kendall also. Um, so it was great. So if you get a chance, go go into December cruise is hopefully praying that they actually have it. Um, so if, if that is, if it does happen, which I'm guessing it will, if everything covers up the way that it should here in the next several weeks or a couple months, uh, definitely go on the cruise. It's well worth it. So we have our Indy. Uh, we have about 1,600 houses that we actually property manage. Kansas City, I think we're around two to 300. Charlotte, I know that one, we're over 400 properties that we have. And then we're over 200 props uh, in the Idaho market. So as you can see, we, we do a lot of business. We buy and sell about 500 properties per year um, in those you know four different cities. Um, it's even come down to it. And I, I'm gonna show you here shortly in just a few minutes, um, we've, when Aaron started doing a lot of stuff in Idaho, um, he got heavily into trailers or manufactured homes and modular homes. So one of the big things that I think, and since we're on the topic that, that you know, that uh, Don and Kendall and I had discussed to discuss with you guys is more of the market. Um, one of the biggest money makers that I personally see and back in 08 through 10, it really saved my butt. Um, I had a trailer park and trailer parks are phenomenal so idaho and kansas city and charlotte we have trailer parks um, in all of them and also we even started dealerships um, because it can be very lucrative of course um, but when you start buying a lot of trailer parks what's the best way to get the best deal on a trailer or on a manufactured home you own the dealership right so all of us went we in our separate cities and states we actually got licensed i'm actually a licensed dealership owner um, so I think it's just funny. I, I, when I went to college, um, I didn't think that I was going to be like the, the trailer park king or something. You know, it's kind of kind of interesting to, to say the least. 
Um, my degree, woo, English degree is really working for me these days, let me tell you. Uh, so we buy a lot of properties. We sell a lot of properties. We have a lot of investors that we work with on a daily basis. Um, and here I'll show you, we're gonna bounce around here um, through the PowerPoint a little bit, but I promise you, I'll, I'll keep you focused. Running through the trees, right? So this this is uh, my partners. That is me in the back, as you can see. It looks kind of the same. I was about 20 pounds lighter there, uh, or 15. Um, and then that's Malou, my wife. She's my business partner here. She's also my broker in charge in Charlotte. Um, over the plus 400 doors, she is my COO. She runs the shop. She's the one that you know cracks the whip on everybody to make sure that everything's being done. She's the one that deals with all the fires with the tenants. And the reason why I bring those things up is, is because you don't have to. You don't have to deal with those things. That's why, you know, come pe people come and actually do business with Aaron and I with Alpine because of that simple fact is that they don't have to deal with all the headaches. You might have to make a decision through an email or a quick phone call or a text, um, but it, we make it really easy. It's the same in all of our markets across the board. And one of the things that I wanted to cover too is we have other markets that we used to be in. I'm also going to cover a couple markets that we're actually interested in opening up sooner or later, quite possibly, um, just because it has a great potential on rentals. Um, that's our main goal. That's what we do. We are um, investors that do rental properties, turnkey. I have my own portfolio. Aaron has his own portfolio. He's sitting on about 250 houses free and clear. Um, we're nowhere near that yet, but we're working towards that. Uh, absolutely. It's going to happen one day. Um, so it's a real thing. We do a lot of single families. We do multifamilies. Uh, we do apartment complexes. Like I said, we we bought uh, probably nine or ten million dollars worth of mobile home parks in the last two years, I believe, uh, maybe two and a half years. Uh, so those are going really well. Like I said, that's why we went and did the dealership thing. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff that Aaron and I have done in our past. Um, a lot of things that we learned from our past experiences was like 08 through 10 that we definitely don't do anymore. Um, I'm sure that there's several of you guys in this group out of 140, 100, almost 150 folks. The thing that, that I know is that there's some of you that felt my damn pain back in the day. And I mean that wholeheartedly, like sleepless. It wasn't sleepless days. It was sleepless weeks. Um, because you had to deal with certain things going on, right? Especially if you're building houses, I was doing some new builds, but I did a ton of rehab. So and I had a, a, I had a ton of uh, rental properties that actually pushed me through that whole entire uh, recession of eight through 10. So I, I'm very thankful for that. And um, I also was able to still do a wholesale deal or a flip, also had some other, other things going on, other businesses. So always trying to diversify uh, making sure that uh, diversification is one of my big pieces too that I would definitely tell you guys if you want to start thinking about. Um, Don and Kendall can definitely help you with some diversification things. It'd be like single family houses. Uh, there's probably a lot of you guys that have 401ks, QRPs, um, you know, IRAs, whatever it may be, money markets, things like that. Uh, and you just got to figure out what you really want to do with that money. Uh, what scares the ever living bejeejees out of me is is that um, a lot of folks lost have lost a lot of cash in the market lately. And I, I mean, none of us have a crystal ball. I mean, I'd tell you I have one, but it's broke, it's in the shop, right? And I, I, don't, I don't do a ton of stuff in the market. I do do a little bit, but very little compared to my real estate. I'm at about a 90-10. Um, so it's very little cash to me in that sense. But I would always ask that you really make sure that you know what you're investing in whether it's you know with um, a Fidelity or whomever it may be. Did you guys know that Fidelity has 20, like $20 trillion? I mean, it is ridiculous how much money they have. It's, it's an un, unbelievably amount of cash. Um, I, I just, it, it's, it's unfathomable, I guess you could say. Um, but if, you're, if you haven't looked at your paperwork to see what kind of things you're paying, like three or 4%, to your broker, whomever it is, really start looking at that and really start thinking about what you want to be in. Um, I always tell my friends, they're always like, why don't you put much money in the stock market? I'm like, well, to me, it's gambling. That's me, my, me personally. I don't think there's anything wrong with it because uh, I still do it, but it's just one of those things. And I personally, if I buy an Apple stock, 
you know, Apple's not letting me sit at the table to make any decisions of what the company is about to go and do, right? Or whomever, whatever it may be. Now, for me, I personally love that if I buy real estate, that's a tangible asset. I can go out and kick it. It's not a piece of paper, right? It's an actual asset that you can insure, that you can go and kick, um, you know, and you know that it's there. Um, it's, it's, I know it's not as liquid as a stock or, or a bond or whatever is out there that you might want to do, um, but it's definitely something that I love and that's made it so that I have a, a great life and a lifestyle that I want. Um, so speaking of back in the day, um, whenever I got started, oh yeah, I took that one out. So here, here's some something interesting from me to you is um, the PowerPoint, uh, most of the PowerPoint presentations that I used to use, I really don't use much right now because they're a little bit different, right? It's kind of different to think about if you're somebody like myself or Don or Kendall, it's kind of like, well, you gotta look at it a little bit different with the Corona stuff going on. It's very interesting to me. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is real quick, my background, uh, went to college, I've got a couple degrees. Um, I got out of college with my English degree and I went right direct into finance. Why I did that, I still don't know, but thank God I did. Um, I actually went and I got all my licensures to be able to sell stocks, bonds, insurance, all that good fun stuff. And I did that for about a year-ish and I was like, I hate this job. I was stuck in a cubicle in this high rise and I couldn't even look out a window. They put us in a box and you're on the phone all day, right? Not much fun to me. So um, I got on the phone or my phone actually rang and it happened to be one of my family members and she was like, hey, you wanna go to do something uh, tonight? And you know it's business driven. I was like, I hate my job. Yeah, let's go. So, and I did okay. Um, I sold Bibles through college, so I'm okay with door knocking and phone calling. Um, but it's definitely a whole co totally different world, right? Um, so I'm sitting there making phone calls, cold calls all day long. Just absolutely hated it. So um, I was asked by a family member go to this thing. So I went to it, um, and it was one of those like a Robert Kiyosaki type thing, and um, and I, I bought this program and I started and it started working because I started working my tail off. So it, it's kind of crazy how that works if you actually do what you're taught or do what you're told and, you know, and just kind of know that um, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the biggest thing is, is that you have to get through whatever fears and whatever crap are in your brain or whatever people are feeding you and just go out and work right and grind and, and work your tail off until it, it pays off now i know that some of you um are already past that in life i totally get it but you understand also why i'm saying it to those that are it's happening to you now and also there's a lot of people right now that i think this is a great time to start building teams and start giving people jobs if you can start getting the real estate uh, industry itself whatever it is if you're a realtor or an investor or, or whatnot so i just think that's good to be able to give folks jobs um so I want to just get into, um, again, my past. Um, this used to be a house. Uh, there was a house there. It actually burned down. I had, I had bought it, rehabbed it. Um, and as you can see, I made about 42 grand on it. Um, and people right now um, are calling me all the time and Facebook, all kinds of different stuff, and asking me, well, like, how am I supposed to find money now with this corona stuff happening? And I, and I tell them the exact same answer. I said, well, if you haven't already found people that have money, then you're gonna have to do it a little bit different way, right? You need to go to your family and your friends. And normally whoever says they have money doesn't, and whoever doesn't act like they have anything normally has all the money. And everybody I tell that to, they're just like, oh my God, so I'm gonna have to go talk to blah, 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 that's my own. I'm like, yeah, that's who you need to go and talk to because they can help you get started. And the reason why I know that is because way back in the day, uh, my aunt actually gave me the loan for my first flip. So she did, we did like 42,000 uh, at 7%. Uh, she also gave me another 12,000 to be able to do the rehab. Um, and then we were able to sell it and we made close to $27,000. So this, this was the second deal I ever did. My first deal I made a thousand fifty bucks. The second deal I ever did was this flip, but as you can see it's no longer there. It's just empty, empty lot. Um, so this is the exact same market that I still buy in. Um, that's where I want to kind of go into. Oh, but I have to show you this. 
this was the very first trailer park I ever bought. I'll come back to that. So a lot of people ask, you know, why, why, why in the world did you pick the cities? You know, you and Aaron pick the cities that you guys are in, and that's where you're investing and doing rental properties. And I'm just like, well, it's pretty easy. And we have pretty much five different criteria. I've got it sitting in front of you. So remember, this is for rentals, right? That's what this is. This is for rentals. Because I want you to think about it. I don't care what market you live in, um, whether you still think it's hot or not or whatever it is. The thing is, is if you want to do flips, you can do flips anywhere. Like you can do flips in California at the top of the market. You just got, you better hope that you sell it before that top actually hits to start going down, right? Um, but it's a big difference whenever you're trying to look at a rental portfolio for yourself so that you can live off of that when you're 40, 50, 60 years old instead of hoping and praying that you have a pension, right? So what, what you have to think about, what I want you to think about is, you know, out of the different cities, out of Kansas City, Indianapolis, um, Idaho, Charlotte, and we also have done other cities. Um, we've done uh, Dallas, Texas. We've done Orlando and Florida. And there are certain things that change over time that it's like, oh, this is a great time to pull out of this market and go find a different market that I'm going to make the same returns that I used to 10 years ago or five years ago or even a year ago in the market that I'm moving out of. Don't be afraid to be in a different market, even if it's at a distance. That's one of the things that I always try to tell everybody is like, your money doesn't matter. It doesn't care where it goes. It just wants to multiply itself as fast as possible, right? So always keep in mind, it's like, if you live in California, I've got tons of clients. Aaron, I have tons of clients in California. Um, and I know Don and Kendall do too. And it's almost impossible to buy a property. Even with all the Corona stuff going, it's, it's almost impossible to buy a property that's gonna cash flow Anything is going to be, you know, more than probably 5%. Now, does it happen? Yes. But is it difficult? Yeah. But think about it. If you can get a flip at 50 cents on the dollar, whatever market you are, hey, if you're not a market and advertise, it's not that difficult. So you just have to know what you're doing, right? And then what to do with it. So what we've, what we've done is we've kind of put this to our little simple science. We buy cheap houses. I'm not saying war zone. I'm not saying any of the bad places like that. What I'm saying is we work blue collar and lower, like the lower middle income. That's where we like to stay. And I'm gonna show you guys some charts um, tonight that you can kind of see where, what I'm talking about and why I'm saying what I'm saying. Because once you actually look at the realistic numbers, the facts, instead of what we're thinking, because we might be watching too much news these days, right? Uh, or listen to too much radio, and they're they're telling you all the bad, bad, bad constantly, and I get it, yeah, you just have to be cautious and not dumb about doing things, right? Um, so I'm gonna be able to show you some charts, and you can even go and find these charts yourself and actually go and dig deep. Um, I know Aaron spends about three hours a day on market knowledge. I spend about an hour a day, either an hour in the morning, whenever I get up at five, I'll, I'll read normally the first hour, um, and I'm doing research on the market in Charlotte and the surrounding areas because we buy within about an hour and a half of Charlotte um, and it's a lot of ground to cover. Now, Aaron's got, he does about three hours a day. And this is, and I'm, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I want to, I want to tell you what we do because if you act, literally, if you want to be able to do seven figure incomes, you can do it. You just have to do the work and do your research to make sure that you're covering your butt and you know your market, right? Um, so. We buy in these different markets um, in Kansas City, again, Idaho, Indianapolis, and Charlotte um, because there are cheap houses there. Um, I can still get cheap houses. Now, every year, I, I actually go out a little bit more to a different county or a different city, and that's how the growth pattern works. Think about New York City. It, it was started way back in the day, right, and they had to spread out in the boroughs. Every city USA is the exact same. I don't care if you're out in the country or not, that when there's growth patterns, that's what you're gonna be looking for, right? Now, if you can find the cheap houses, what we're always trying to do, um, and let me show you, there is a place that everybody can go. This is a great place. Look on the very bottom of the screen. It says Joint Center for Housing Studies of Harvard University. I think Harvard knows their stuff on occasion, right? They're kind of smart sometimes. Um, what you need to do is you need to start learning your market. 
So that leads into, I want to give you some, some juice here. A uh, business journal. Everybody needs to go and look at their business journal tonight. After I'm done, please. I would appreciate that. So, so with Don and Kendall. Um, the next one is, um, to me, very ninja-esque. And um, a lot of people don't do it, and I don't know why. Uh, but I personally, and we just did the other night, uh, we were we were sitting here, and our actually Charlotte Mecklenburg, um, our you know the folks that we've put into office, they have to have their city meetings. So you need to go and look at your city meetings, okay? And also county sometimes. Not not as exciting in most cases. Uh, just normally because in the county you don't have as many houses. I'm not making as much money there or making us as much money there. So it's not as much fun for me. Now this is the thing. So as, and I'll give you an example. Uh, um, the other night, they actually, it was budget night. Do you think it's really smart and really good if you're if you're a real estate investor, whether you're trying to play one now or not, right, or to be one, which you can easily do, anybody can do this. Um, I sat there and listened to budgets, and the coolest and the best thing was, my wife and I were sitting there, you know, she's my business partner, we were sitting there, and I was like, babe, are you seeing all this stuff? This is amazing, that this stuff that, that they're doing on this budget, because they've got a ton of corona budget money too, that we as real estate investors can use. So for for rehabs, uh, for vacancies, for whatever, I'm just going, oh my God, this is a treasure trove of so much amazing information because I hadn't watched one in probably three months and they're pretty much every month, right? So I'd highly suggest going to Google tonight or whatever search engine you use and um, look up your city meetings. Now this is what's really cool for Charlotte as an example because I have watched a lot of them is they actually record them so you can watch them at any time, just kind of like these, right? So most of the time. Um, but it is a wealth of knowledge that you've never thought of. I mean, they're telling you what's coming in, why it's coming in, why they disagree with it and they're not gonna put any money into it. It's very intriguing. I was very excited about it. Um, so let's get back to the cheap houses. All right, so look for cheap houses. And uh, some of you guys might live in areas that you have cheap houses, but now you're gonna have to go buy it yourself, rehab it yourself, and then find a tenant, right? And then do the property management. So this is one of the cool things. We are vertically integrated throughout the entire business in every one of our cities. So I own everything, me, I own it. Uh, well, kind of, not really, but it's owned, right? Uh, so I've got the property management company, I've got the construction company, I've got the investment company, I've got the sales company, like I cover everything. I have, all together in Alpine, we've got about 400 employees. Um, I've personally got about 75 to 80, depending on what day of the week it is. Uh, if you're in construction, you know what I mean. Um, you got to deal with all kinds of fun things constantly. Um, but we have a lot of people, we have a lot of mouths to feed, right? So this whole Corona thing, uh, we want to make sure that we're getting rents, we're doing all the things right. Um, so when you're looking at your market, cheap houses, um, unemployment has to be low, right? That's number two, that's jobs. So we did cheap houses, we did jobs, right? Um, population growth. So let's think about this. I would say in almost all cities right now, USA, there's still population growth happening, except I think what, Chicago, and then some of the places in California, and they're all going to Utah and Idaho, and they all wanna go and live beside Don and his amazing wife. Right, Don, right? So um, we're looking for population growth. So think about, is my area have a lot of population growth now? or is it gonna come, right? And I'll give you a perfect example. One of the markets that, that I work heavily here is um, Salisbury. It's about, it's north about 45 miles of me here in Charlotte from my office. And they have, um, I mean, there's like, I think 70,000 people there-ish. And this is the thing. If you knew that at 1,200 jobs were about to be moved in, right? Would you think that's a great growth reason to go in and start investing there? And I personally think, yeah, of course, or else I'm a, a big dum dum, right? So that's what I'm looking for is growth of these towns, growth of these cities, and you have to watch how it's growing and where it's growing, right? So that's population growth. So make sure you have that. 
fiscally sound and friendly state government. Now, North Carolina, very fiscally sound, um, the state government, I can get people out really quick out of houses. Um, I don't have many problems. They're not treading on me to do a lot of stuff here. Um, most time code enforcement, because we pull permits and all that good fun stuff on our job sites, that makes it easy. Um, so if you do it right, it doesn't really matter, right? You, you don't have to worry about things. But what we want to make sure is that they're actually paying people, other states, the federal government, so that they don't start taxing the ever-living bejeejees out of you, right? So we want to make sure that they're fiscally sound. Now, the last one, uh, the city that spends less than half its money on its interest payments. So let me give you a perfect example. I want to give you a city. Um, it's the closest big city to me, and it's Atlanta, Georgia. So I don't mind Atlanta. I don't want to go there because the traffic's insane, uh, way worse than Charlotte. But at the same time, they've got 6.6 .6 million people, I think. We've got like 2.2 .2 million people in Charlotte. Big difference, right? So I want to make sure that out of everything, because think about it, Atlanta's got cheap houses, Atlanta's got jobs, Atlanta has population growth, Atlanta's actually pretty darn fiscally good, you know, I mean, and you can get people out, um, but the, the, I'm sorry, the outskirts of Atlanta do well. The city of Atlanta, Atlanta pays over half of what it brings in just to interest payments. Think about that for a minute. What's the only way, or one of the only ways, that the city of Atlanta is going to be able to raise money. Yeah, you're right. If you said taxes, that's exactly what they wind up doing. So why would I want to put mine and your money in a spot in a city that that can happen? It just doesn't make sense for us. So I've, for the rental piece of it, um, if you live in a, in a place that has all this stuff, hey, have at it, go for it. If you're trying to be passive, um, it's a whole different story, right? It, and this is how I look at it. You have two choices. You can do active or you can do passive or you can do both, right? And all of us want to get to the passive one day, right? That's what we're all work, working our kahunas off on because we don't want to have to do this until the day we die. Um, so let's figure out how we can do that. Now, if you're already in a position, which we have, we have a close to 1,000 investors that have already bought and sold properties with us, um, that have rental properties. That's who we manage their properties, right? Um, and we're exclusively, we work with them. We don't even pick up other people's rental properties. Um, it's just our individuals that have come through Alpine and through like Don and Kendall that want to actually do business with us because we actually have a relationship. You're part of our tribe at that point, and it makes it really easy to talk to you, right? Um, so whenever, whenever you're, you're thinking of your market, go through that checklist and then ask yourself for the passive or active, what do I really need to do now? Because there's a lot of people, and I, I'm, I'm gonna go through a real quick chart for you. Let me find it. Um, I know I got it here. Bear with, okay, right here. So in 2010, only 20% of homes uh, were at the price of 300,000 or higher, right? In 2020, half of these homes, this this is gonna this could be a, become a uh, a true epidemic, uh, unlike anything else but Corona. I mean, this is a real thing, guys. So the next one is the one that I really wanted to hit home on. Um, my parents are uh, my dad's seventy, my mom's twenty five. Wink, wink. Uh, and you know he's in the silver tsunami piece, right? So you guys, we already covered the first one, right? So think of it from the silver tsunami. That that's our our silver-haired folks that are out there, our um, older folks that are are still just out there killing it. So one third of 140 million homes are owned by boomers and older. Over the next 15 years, many of these homes will need to be sold. A drop in the market increase in unemployment will increase foreclosure and increase the number of these deals listed for sale in the market. So I want to bring something up that I read the other day um, about the market. This forbearance thing that's happening, not a big fan. I know that it's helping a ton of people, but I don't know. In fact, I know they don't know. Um, I would bet that 90% of these people that are doing these forbearance have no clue what they're doing. And what's going to happen is it is going to completely make them crumble. And I, I hate that. Um, but to understand it is a whole different thing. I've had my, my mortgage broker's license and 
I remember whenever all this stuff was happening with my biz in 08 through 10, and I was also doing, doing loans and mortgages and forbearance, things like that. It's okay if you want to do a forbearance, in my opinion, if you save the money, if you put that money in the account. If you don't have the money, I get it. It makes total sense. I'm not here to just share my opinion, but I'm sharing with you what I've seen in the past happen, right? I'm giving you factual data from the life I've lived. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that there, there was a few of you, normally it's a very small portion of us, that also went through uh, 08 and 10 and came out on the other side, be able to breathe and just maybe a, a bloody nose, right? Aaron and I were able to do that. Uh, thank God, it's a great thing. But now, I mean, think about it. Our silver tsunami folks, they lost half of their money quite possibly in the market. Could have been in a pension fund or whatever that was in the market. I mean, I'm scared to death for these folks. And I wanna figure out how we can help them. So how do we do that? Quite simple. You own the houses that are in the different markets. So let me let me show and explain to you exactly how this worked in 08 to 10 and how pretty darn sure it's going to work just the same way this way. Now, could there be a little difference? Yes, but just bear with me. Now, this is with a silver, silver side of town, right? This is going to be our college students that just graduated or uh, have been graduated for a year or so and they weren't either they didn't want to go get a job or they couldn't find something. How that is possible over the last couple of years, I don't know, but it happened. Uh, so what I want you to think about is, okay, what happened to all the people that you knew? Cause everybody knew somebody that was in the uppity up, right? And the income zone. So who lost everything or close to everything or had to go through the, the terrible BK, right? Or had some foreclosures on them, whatever it may be. So this is what happens. I want you to pay attention here. Upper middle class and wealthy homeowners and renters right they're in the upper income well they ain't got anywhere else to go if you're broke if you don't have a job if you can't pay your bills what's the only option that you have well that means you've got to move to this now that's the middle class of blue collar renters and homeowners very similar to what we have and what we actually do business with you guys in our tribe it's kind of strange how that works so then the last one is, is this low income renters and unemployed welfare section 8 and renters they don't ever go away. In fact, the low income, they act really, really good because they don't want to get kicked out of these programs that the state or the federal government is paying, right? So this is what happens. So you've got the upper going down and the low, and what happens is, is they get rent increases on vouchers or whatever it may be. They might have two or three jobs, right? And guess where they wind up going to? They'll go here. And then some of these folks will go there. Some of these folks will go there. Are you with me? Smell what I'm stepping in, right? So what I need you guys to think about is, where are you, right, from a passive or active standpoint? I've already explained to you and shown you who we deal with, right? We're dealing with those blue collar or, or low, lower middle class type renters. And remember, this is what I want you to understand. Because some of you may not get it yet. I, I remember I didn't get it right off the bat back in the day, whenever and it started to happen about 07 ish, mid 07 ish. And I'm like, what is going on? These really wealthy people, they're losing their houses or they're having to move into different neighborhoods and they're having to sell their car or whatever it may be. So it's very interesting because whenever my partner and I started back in 99, this is where I stayed. And guess what? This is what kept paying my bills throughout all the craziness. Now, so that leads to, to a question, right? Because some of you might be thinking, well, what happens with, you know, over the summer as an example, the corona stuff? Well, we don't really know. Um, there's a lot of different loan things, SBAs that you can get, state, state things that you can get. Um, but the way that I look at it is, is this. I'm cash strong, right? So I can go and buy more houses that I have that become my rental properties. See, this is the thing that people don't really understand or think about, I think, is if I'm sure you guys have heard of a hedge fund, right? So this happens to be a hedge fund. He no longer is with Cerberus, but this gentleman is 
chomping at the bit to be able to buy houses. I would put money on that. Because what's happening, guys, is that all these hedge funds, see, we've, we're we sitting on about 60 props as an example to be able to sell to folks right now. And we already have a list of people that are buying these houses, right? So we're not going to run out, but sooner or later, but we always have more inventory. But I'm trying to give you an example here. So Aaron and myself, we've worked with these hedge funds and they've already asked Aaron if when everything changes and everybody's starting to go through foreclosure and all these hard times, would we in all these different markets be able to do like we did back in the day in 2012? Because that's whenever the hedge funds just got in was 2012. Do you know these guys own about 8% of US homes? Is that not amazing? I mean, they're they're taking over. It's no question. They're definitely running shop. They're setting setting their parameters and setting up areas and cities that are just killing it. But we've already sold to these guys way back in the day in 2012. So we already have a relationship. So they're like, hey, can you guys do this? Well, which one do you think's easier? Dealing with hedge funds or dealing with homeowners, right? Or investor homeowners, right? That is their rental property. So we always try to get everybody to understand, like we have different venues, but we've got these guys chopping a bit. It's kind of crazy to me, but it's the, the reality of it, right? So well, another thing, I want to add this. When you go out, if you're doing this actively as I do every day, what you need to think about is this. What hedge funds are buying in my market? See, guys, I want you to know how to do things. All you have to do is go on to Google, put in your city, and put hedge fund real estate hedge fund, and you're gonna get a list of hedge fund buyers and you need to call them. And you need to say, hey, I'm an investor here in blah, 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 in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I see that you guys are, you know, have already bought some stuff here, and I wanna just let you know that I'm always looking for new buyers. So that's something that you guys can easily do, okay? Um, and I know that I cannot believe already what time it is. It's unbelievable. These always go too fast. It's all about some value, isn't it, guys? Um, all right, so I told you to do business journal. Definitely check out the city. Um, start calling hedge funds. Uh, think about that. It's a very important thing. Uh, here, here's some interesting facts. I wanted to remember, I told you I was going to do some facts. This is actually from Zillow. So the home price median, right? So the median price of a home in the U.S. is $231,700, right? Up 4.7% in the past year. In December 2013, the median value of a home in the U.S., was 163.3. So why why do you care, right? Well, I care because I do a lot of rental properties, and I know that again, knowing my market, when the market gets too expensive, guess what? People have to move, and they have to come, and they they have to rent from me or downgrade from their house that they're currently in, right? So this is what I want you to notice: the appreciation over the last six years is 42 percent. But this is this is the intriguing part. For comparison, the average hourly wage stood at around $20 in 2013. The average hourly wage is now only approaching, and I say only, approaching $24, which translates into a, a rise of less than 20% over the past six years. So wait, so Travis, you're telling me that it went up 42%, the market did, and rents everything, but the people aren't making the, the same amount of money, right? So there's this huge challenge in, uh, between the two that we have to try to figure out. So what happens is, well, I was thinking that this was going to happen not by corona. I thought this was going to happen sooner or later. But again, thank God I'm in the markets that I'm in. I don't have to worry about it. Didn't have to worry about it back in the day. So you guys have got to figure out what part of this you're going to be. Are you going to be an active? Are you going to, you know, are you going to be in the passive piece? It's totally up to you. So this is another crazy thing. Student loans stifling housing, right? So we have all these kids that have graduated from college and this is this is 1.5 trillion crisis. It's now 1.7 trillion dollars is a student loan. It is a travesty to have to even think about how these kids are ever going to pay for their school loans, right? It's it's insane. So let's go back here real quick. <laughs> so how were the markets looking prior to Corona, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to share that with you. Markets before Corona were chugging along. Um, our investors, 
and let me kind of give you an idea how it works. Our investors are around a seven to 10% return, right? That's gonna be, if you look at it from a cap rate perspective, right? Um, and we're looking at appreciation with our investors of about, um, between, we're between five and 15, because a lot of my market in Charlotte went up 15%. So if you had an overall, say, 15 to 20% return overall every year, year after year, how quickly does your money grow? That's what you need to think about, right? Again, passive or active, that's the big difference. You know, we deal with a lot of passive people that have those 401ks, QRPs, IRAs, self-directed, whatever it may be, in order to purchase homes with us. Um, so let me go through, oh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the trailer park. So here's here's our other thought on this. This is another reason why we've been buying a ton of trailer parks. Well, one, they're just a great investment. Um, I, I don't know if anybody on here has any trailer parks, but if, if you um, don't, I'd highly suggest start looking into them and start learning how to do it. It's a great industry, great business to be in. Um, so trailer parks. Here's where our head's at on the trailer parks. We figure that all these folks, the silver folks, um, the college kids that don't have a job or can't find a job, don't want to go get one, whatever it may be, right? Um, even folks that are losing jobs now, as an example, I hate it. I would love for us to start going out and being able to touch people again, right? I mean, my God, this has been crazy being stuck in the house. So what, what we look at is trailers, you're always going to have a renter for a trailer, a manufactured home, it, always. They are, to me, the best thing that you can buy just about because it's the lowest tier, but you also have 55 and older, right? You have all different types of parks around the country these days, and you have to figure out what would make sense for you. But trailers, single trailers are a great investment. We have tons of those. We buy and sell those all the time too. Um, actually, I've got three of them under contract right now, and I'm gonna wholesale probably two of them and keep one of them for myself. And that means those other two are gonna pay completely for the other trailer, so I have a free and clear property. It's a beautiful thing and make uh, 600, 650 bucks um, off of it a month, right? Yes, it needs some fix up. So I get it. Um, so if you have a chance, uh, start figuring out how to do um, trailer parks. Now, one cool thing um, that I also would like to share with you guys is that we also have training. We do not get paid on it. It's free training. We're, we're giving it to you guys. Um, if, if you'd like to use it, because we want you to actually make money so that you want to come and buy rental properties with us. Makes sense, right? Um, and, and to visit us, all you have to do is come up to Indy. Uh, we actually pay for your hotel and your food for the weekend. You just have to get there. It's kind of a pretty ingenious idea, to be honest with you. I think it's a great idea. Uh, we actually feed you and put you up for the night for uh, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday and then you fly home Sunday or drive home Sunday. It's kind of a no brainer, right? Um, and you learn about trailer parks. You're gonna learn about how I market. That's what my expertise is, is marketing and advertising. Um, that's what I do every day for the most part, that finance um, and accounting stuff with my bookkeepers and accountants. So that's always fun. Um, good problem to have though, right? Thank God. Um, but yeah, we would love to have you guys come out. Um, I'm gonna get, get into that here shortly in just a minute. Um, I wanted to share the trailer park piece with you. Um, I wanted to share that. Yep, you guys already know the student loan debt's crazy and insane. Here's a couple other things. So there were already huge shortages in number of low cost rentals in 2020. I really want you to see this because I've told you the markets that we're in, but you guys can also be in. Um, strong growth in high cost rentals has uh, coincided with dramatic declines in low cost units. So this is what's happened. Um, I want you to just look at the numbers here uh, down at the bottom far left. Um, and notice that it's under 600 rent, six to uh, up to a thousand and then over a thousand, right? Now, if you look at this, um, it's, it's insane to me because uh, there's really been just a little bit of decline, right? It's, it's a decline here, which is actually a good thing. So everything else is going is going crazy. Um, so if you're looking at the under, and we've got also the blue, and it's starting to taper down too, where the high price is going up. So 
while down in all segments, vacancy rates, right? Moderate and low, moderate and lower quality rentals are especially low. So this one is huge to me and in my brain. And you know, if you go to Zillow, the the Harvard website that I gave you guys, this this is like so important to me. We are still we still don't have enough houses for tenants. There's nowhere even close or near. As you can see, we deal with the blue collar, right? So we're we're in the upper part of the orange. We're definitely in the dark, the the um, darker one, right? Uh, to a point, which is to the right. But we're really here. I mean, we've got Airbnbs. That's why I say that we're in the four and five. Um, but we're pretty much in the orange and the blue. There's not enough housing at all. Now in 08, there was an overabundance of housing, right? So right now we don't we don't have enough housing. We don't have enough rental properties. And what I always like to say is we don't have enough affordable housing for the folks that actually want to pay me rent. So that's what we're always working towards with you guys to make make sure that happens. Um, let me see where else are we. Rents continue to climb. Okay, so let's go back to 08 real quick. Remember, I'm telling you about the past. So if I if I've been through the past, history normally repeats itself because people don't remember, right? And some of the same things can happen if this becomes a downright recession, all that stuff. Um, my rent still went up in 08, 09, and 10. That's how I made it. That's how this helped me a lot. Um, the rents will continue to go up. Whenever markets are crashing, rents still go up. Again, why is that? Well, think about the bucket, the buckets that I just shared with you guys, right? Oh, there's another one. Let me see. There it is. Right here. Think about it. The folks at the top and the upper income, they're coming down, right? So they can afford that price and the folks in the middle and working might have to go down to the lower, right? And they move into our trailer parks that we own or that you become a partner on with us, right? So keep that in mind. It's kind of crazy. Here's some, here's some more facts. Real gross rent history for the US. Um, look at the numbers, right? So you've got your median 1,082, this is back in 2017, and 1,012 on the median uh, for the US. So the last time the market crash rents increased every year. That's what I need you to notice. And look, did they? Completely. Did they? Completely. That's a real thing, that's a fact. Uh, I'm not just throwing it at the wall and seeing if it sticks, right? Um, rents went up and vacancy went down. Homeownership continued to drop and renters steadily increased. Um, I don't know if you guys would agree with this. I'm seeing it. Um, I think that our country is becoming a country of renters. And I feel that it's great that I'm able to be that person that gives them that ability to be able to rent um, something that's safe, secure, clean, smells good, and that their kids can grow up in or their grandbabies can grow up in or whatever it may be, right? No matter what, it's a trailer single family house, apartment complex that we own, it does not matter. We want to try to keep them as clean as possible, right? All right, so um, this is the, one of the last slides I want to show you because I know it's almost it's almost 9.30. What I'm about to show you is a real thing. It's not a joke, I promise you. Here it is. That is a real trailer park in Louisiana. I had to at least show it to you guys. Some of you are going to be like, what? There's no way. Um, again, here's a home price to income ratio. It's insane how, how expensive things are. Um, that's why Aaron actually left Southern California after he's got his MBA um, from Cal Poly. And he got out of Cal Cali to actually go to Indianapolis back in 2005 to get um, Alpine started because he saw in 2004 that the market was just getting stupidly insane and wasn't making sense and you couldn't make cash flow anymore. So his returns went from 10% um, for himself and investors all the way down to two and three percent, which just didn't make any sense anymore. So that's why he headed out to Indy. Um, now, he he um, asked me to join him about eight years ago. So Aaron and I have been business partners for that long. So I've known him for a good long time. Um, and lastly, just to put it out there. So this is this is how it works. So we we have monthly um, meetings in Indy. Uh, this past weekend was actually our meeting and we were unable to do it of course because of corona 
Um, so what we what we do is we we're going to pay for your food and your hotel, um, and you just got to get there. But we ask that all that we ask is that you have something if you've got something in IRA or something in savings or something that you will want to do passively to come and work with us. We'd love for you to come to Indy. Um, and in fact, um, I spoke to Don, and Don was saying that um, he also wanted to throw in um, he would actually give you a reimbursement of up to 500 bucks um, on your on your plane ticket if you actually purchase a property with us, which is a pretty darn good deal. So let me explain. Aaron is one of the best speakers I and trainers I've ever ever met, ever had a chance and an opportunity uh, to train with, and he's brilliant. I mean, seriously, he's a brilliant mind. Um, he's very nerdy under uh, that circumstance. That's why I love him. I think it's great because I'm very nerdy myself on so many different levels. Um, and when you come in, you're, you're part of our family. Uh, Don and Kendall will be there almost in all cases. They, they love it. They come, um, you know, especially if you're from their group, they want to make sure that you're, you know, you're, they're there for you to talk about additional things, asset protection, whatever it may be. Um, but you're going to learn a ton of stuff. It's, it's not just sitting there and we're selling you anything because we don't have, we don't sell you anything. We actually teach you for three full days about real estate investing, about trailer parks, about Airbnbs. Um, and in fact, for those of you that do wanna come, um, after you've talked to Kendall and Megan, um, what we'll do is we'll even send you a link so that you can see our online class of the Airbnb um, and also the trailer park class. So I think that's pretty darn good. I mean, we're giving you way more value than anything, um, in my opinion. So, and it's great, I've seen him. Um, I watched Aaron, he's, he's phenomenal at how he teaches them. So you'll absolutely love it. Uh, so here's here's what you guys can do uh, here go after we're done go to protectwealth.com front slash indy and fill out the registration form and that's going to get it so that kendall uh will be able to um get that over to megan who is aaron's amazing wife that i showed you a picture of earlier the, the beautiful redhead she's brilliant she also in her part of the business she actually helps you she's got her and three others that are her team um, and they're phenomenal at what they do. She goes through and she's actually your portfolio specialist. She's wanna sit down and see where you're at currently and figure out where you wanna be, whether you're passive or active or passive and active. She's gonna sit down and say, hey, you know, this, this is five to seven properties that we have. You just figure out, here's pictures, here's the numbers, here's everything, you don't have to think and figure out if it's something that you might wanna do. So it's really simple. There's, there's no sales at, at all out during the weekend. Nobody's going to come and be pushy or anything. And I know that it. everybody that comes to India is just like, oh, my God, they really don't do anything. No, we sit there and we teach you and train you. We do a cocktail party uh, Thursday night and Friday night. Uh, I'm sorry, Friday night and Saturday night also. Um, if you're wanting to know what the dates are, we've got May right now. We have May 22nd through the 24th. Um, we have June 5th through 7th. July 10th through 12th and August 7th through 9th. So this is what we're thinking is going to happen because um, Aaron just did another, another one of these. There's a lot of folks that are trying to get in. So I don't even know if May is open. I, we're supposed to have a May one. I don't know if it will happen. I hope we do because I'm very sad to not see Don and Kendall. Very sad. See, look at me. Um, if we have it, all you need to do is if you'd like to do the May one to get out of town, which a lot of us will want to by that time, I'm pretty darn sure. Um, just let Kendall know, and also then he'll get you in contact um, with our team in Indianapolis so that they can take care of you. But those are the dates, and I'm sure uh, that Kendall could probably get those dates also emailed out to everybody that's interested, or definitely if you do the registration. Um, so it's three days, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you'll need, uh, you'll need to fly in Thursday and stay till Sunday. We get done around uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, so you can get an early plane ticket. I normally fly out at 5.00. Aaron normally flies out at like four o'clock. He still makes it by leaving at a little after two, 2.30. Um, also, um, we're gonna give you an autographed copy of Trip Tips, Tricks, Foreclosures and Flips, uh, which is written and really published. He's a real, real boy. He's not Pinocchio. Um, he actually got signed by uh, Simon Schuster, I think it is. Uh, and then if you are coming out to Indy, we'd love to send the uh, free classes to you wholesaling flipping and marketing real estate um so and don and kendall have all that stuff for you guys so hopefully you guys learned a ton of stuff 
I gave you a bunch of different value and facts. Um, so are there any questions or anything that you guys had for me? Please feel free to ask. Travis, you're awesome. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to pip, pipe in. I know Don will probably come in and help uh, facilitate questions, but I wanted to pipe in. I will definitely be sending out the dates. I see a few of you asking questions about the upcoming dates and locations. Um, yeah, we'll get you dates and locations. If you click on that link, protectwealth.com slash indy, I-N-D-Y, <laughs> you can get the dates and locations there. All the dates going to October right now. And yes, we hope we can make the flights, so we'll see. But we're planning That's on right yeah, now. I hope so. I'm so <laughs> sad. Yeah. Don, are you right. there? So, there you go. Yeah. So, Travis. Yes, um, sir. What percentage, uh, we got a question here. What percentage of the people paid their rent in April? Um, actually, it's a great question. Um, we literally in Charlotte, we just hit, I believe it was 97.5% today. Or no, I'm sorry, yesterday, because that's when we had staff meeting. 97.5% was yesterday. And we have so 400 days. What, is, it, is that normally? I mean, what's your normal? Yeah. yeah, that would be our norm. So this is what, it's a great question. Let me explain to you. So if you talk to me on the 5th of the month, right? We were 6% behind what we were the same time the, a year ago, right? 12 months trailing. So we were very excited about having 97.5 by yesterday. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a very small amount, uh, maybe 1%. Uh, we would normally carry a little over 1% on the regular. So if we're at one or one and a half, I'm pretty darn happy to be honest with you. So I think it's really good. Um, I've got some friends uh, with Airbnbs that have had some had some major issues. I feel horrible for them, um, but most of them are very wealthy and they don't really owe anything on them. And I happen to be one of them. I've got an Airbnb. It's just not doing much, but they're still they can be a, right now. It could be a great time to go pick up Airbnbs if you want to make offers on them. To be honest, uh, it wouldn't be a bad deal. I'm pretty sure. So hopefully that answered your question. Okay, Walter's asking, what, what are your average rental amounts in Charlotte? Great question. Um, most of our rents are between $800 and $1,100 per month. That, that's, okay. that's our, because it depends on what beds and bath we have. Our smallest houses are two bedroom, two baths. You're looking at getting, you know, most of the time, $900 bucks for that, up to $1,000 to $1,100. Okay. Gregory is asking, what's the name of the Harvard study you cited? It is the joint study. Hold on, and I'll, I will pull back up so that you can see it. It'll be on your screen. Am I, I'm still, yeah, I'm still sharing the screen, so bear with me. Oh, actually, it's back up. I'm sorry. There it is. It is on the very bottom, Joint Center for Housing Studies of Harvard University. And I want to tell you something. If you are like me and you like just like scientific or mathematic reading, I don't know why I love it, but I do. If you hung out with me, you'd think the complete opposite, I promise, because I, I like that fun. It's goofy. Uh, but right. And but they have got some of the best PDFs that you download for free about the housing markets. And I mean, I read I put them on my reader. So whenever I was flying all the time, that's what I would read. That would be my fun read. Uh, to kind of back out of my business for a couple hours. But they've got some amazing PDFs. Just you have to go around the entire site and click on everything and then download all the PDFs. I promise you, you'll love them. Next question. Good. All right. So what does a trailer cost in Idaho? That's a great question. Um, I, we're looking at normally around forty to 45000 Um, That comes with everything. It comes with... Um, also your appliances. So you normally have, you, you can, it's kind of different. It kind of depends on what you want to do. You can order it however you want it and as decked out as possible, kind of like a car, since it is a car. Um, so you just got to figure out, but I'd say you're looking at probably about 40 grand would be about the lowest that you're going to be. Um, and that's going in starting point for the most part. What about a double wide? Double wides um, are going to go for, uh, my doubles I'm getting for about 70, 60 to 70. Okay. Um, and you can deck those out too, just like a house. And then the property is extra or you're paying a lot for rent, so you're yeah, not worried about yeah, you it. Gotta, yep, you gotta get the land. Um, you buy the land normally, um, and then you gotta pay for all the hookups, all the utilities. 
So the way that I look at it in most cases, if I'm going to buy a trailer from an investment standpoint, which I actually look, I've, I look at them all the time. Like every day I have a trailer, a couple of trailers come past my desk. What I look at is if, if the utilities are already out there, I'm going to save a ton of money, right? And it depends on where you're at. So you can't put manufactured housing in cities anymore. You have to do it in counties. So you're already going to be rural. So you're probably going to have to do a well and a septic more than likely. So you need to find out what your wells and septics are going to cost, right? And this is true. Like this is the stuff that we teach over the weekend. If you get anything from me, this is how it is. I mean, we, we know our stuff because we do this every day. I'm in the trenches, just like Don said. It happens every day. I, I'm in firestorm all day long, whether it's in my business or outside of my business, it's constantly something, right? So when you're when I'm looking at land, I look at the land. Um, I'll see what the utilities are. If there's utilities that I can deduct that from it. You got to pull permits. You got to find a, a dealer. Um, you know, if you're in South, North, anywhere on the East Coast, I can pretty much send a trailer to you for the most part, depending on what wind zone you're in. Again, something that you'll learn over time as an investor, right? Um, and then whatever the land costs. So, as, and I'll give you a perfect example. So it would cost say forty, just say forty thousand for the trailer. Um, I would say to get all the the plumbing, um, your well, your septic. You're looking at probably about another twenty-five to thirty thousand for that, um, and that includes the land in most cases because that's about high, as high as I'd want to go because my return starts to go down at that point if if I don't hit those numbers. So that kind of give you an idea. Okay, Larry is interested in multifamily. Now you didn't talk much about that. Are you investing in multifamily? Why or why not? Um, actually, no, I love multifamily. Um, we do have apartments. We do the trailer parks. Um, I do one to, you know, two to four units. Um, you know, anything five or more is considered commercial. Four and less is considered residential and or multi two to four. Um, I personally love them. Um, this is the tough part with multis. And this is just my experience. This is why I do more houses than anything, even in my own portfolio. I'm dead serious. Like I've got definitely more houses than I have of anything out. Well, more houses besides trailers, <laughs> let me put it that way. Um, when you have a multi-unit and I've rented them for over 20 years, you're always gonna have a higher vacancy rate because they're sharing walls. Now, this is what's weird. That's multis. When you get into apartments, the vacancy drops a little bit because in an apartment, you know you're definitely gonna have two people more likely on your side and somebody's gonna be loud as hell, right? I mean. That, that's just the way that I think a lot of people think. With, a, with the multi-units, I have the highest vacancy rate in my multis. Now, they, they have been better than they were 10, 12 years ago, but I definitely have a, a little bit higher vacancy rate. I would say by about 4 to 6% higher uh, than I would with my houses. But I love them. Multis are great. The big thing with commercial and multi-units is this. And I think this is, this is me in real estate no matter what. Why do you buy stocks is the question, right? It's of course the only answer is well, you want the best return, so you buy whatever stock that is giving you that dividend or that return, right? There's, this is no different, and I don't know why people. A lot of people don't do it that same way. I buy because my money wants to multiply itself as fast as possible. I buy where it's seven percent or better, um, and that doesn't include any appreciation or depreciation or anything else that I get to take off because I have an LLC, right? Um, that thank God Don has actually very much helped me on in the past. And I'm dead serious when I say that. I've been like, I have a question. I've got all these LLCs. Please, God, help me. And he's like, breathe and have a big <laughs> pad of paper. And I went, I'm here. I got, I've got both. Just let me breathe. And, and then he went through and just told me everything. So I love multis. I love singles. Um, the other, the only biggest challenge that I have with multis, I don't think that anyone's better than another. I mean, you could be storage facilities. I don't think that one thing's better than another. I think it's what you like. What's your return though, is what I was getting to. What's the return that you want out of that asset? That's what you need to be thinking about all the time while you're going through all of this stuff. Um, and then at that point, strike why it's hot and get it, hopefully get a good deal on it. And is there a concern for liquidating? Uh, yeah, I mean, just Single family homes are always easy to liquidate. Multifamilies yes. may or may not be that, right? Great point. Easiest thing, I mean, think about it. You can you can cash out stocks pretty quick, you know, bonds, all those CDs, whatever. Um, they're in time. Multi units are much harder to, to resell because you are or you're you have just went down from home buyer or another investor, right? Because the home buyer piece is huge. Your your buying pool shrinks for every unit that you add on to that's not a house. 
So your, your holding time is definitely going to be longer. It's going to be harder to sell in the long run whenever you do want to finally liquidate. Uh, so that's, de that's a huge piece for me. And thank you for bringing that up, Don. Um, I shouldn't have missed that. That's a great point. Um, so yeah, it's not as easy for me to sell. I can pop, I can pop it anywhere and pretty much get rid of it if I have a decent price on it. So if you've got a brand new investor that has a little bit of money, maybe for two or three houses, would you start sure. with multifamily or you start with personal residence and then add multi on later? Or how, how, how would you start with the brand new investor? Me personally, I always like for everybody to get their, their toes wet. So I would say go out, pick you up a single family house. Um, depending on what kind of cash you can have. Now, see, this is what I did in 08. Let me explain to you what I did in 08 compared to what I'm doing now. And you guys may be like, what? Because no guru besides, I think, Aaron and I have done this uh, the way that I know that we've done it. We don't carry debt on anything that we have in our portfolio. That's right. I just said it. We don't carry debt. We actually don't want you to carry debt if you get something with us. I know some of you might be like, that is just insane or dumb or whatever. I get it. I love sleep. Sleep is my best friend. And I know when I don't have mortgages to pay, and this is happening right now in the world, we've had people laugh. You guys are idiots not going and getting loans on your properties. Guys, I don't have loans on my, my two offices I have in Charlotte. I don't have I don't have loans. And my whole thing, I've got them covered. And why? Because Don and Gemma have helped me, honestly. Um, so I don't have loans. So when you don't have loans, you don't have to necessarily worry about getting the rent. But what you want to think about is that resale value down the road and figure out what you can do the best. Were you highly leveraged in, in 08? And Ooh, boy, was I. I was about 90%. Ooh. And that's Which why I do not do killed? Yeah, it was absolutely horrible. Um, honest to God, I made it through because I had great tenants. Um, I talked to my tenants. Communication was key back in 08. Communication is key for... Uh, you know, 2020 right now, um, our teams around the cities that we have and hopefully all the other people that are in property management are being kind to these folks and trying to help them as much as possible. But at the same time, we're also trying to run a business. So, oh, okay, I was way over leveraged on and that's what killed me. Um, and that's why I don't do that anymore, because I lost sleepless nights, even whenever rent was coming in, because you didn't know what was going to happen the next day. Right. Kind of like today. So. We, we, we feed and live off of that passive cash flow, which is the best thing in the world. So what could an average investor, Henry's asking, expect to get out of a rental property? Let's say you've got an IRA, you've got a little bit of money in there. We, obviously, you're looking at cash flow as well as appreciation. What's, what's your, what, what kind of averages are you looking at? Um, just like I said earlier on here, right here, guys, this is, this is what we're hitting. Um, we actually track all this stuff in each one of our cities, so we know what our returns are. Um, right now, this is our actuals. We're getting between 7 to 10%. So if you buy a house, um, I, me personally, I don't want to buy anything unless I'm making 7%. That's just me personally. Some other people may not even care to get 7 That's cool. That's great. Um, I think 7 is a great return to be passive. I don't have to deal with it. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't need to keep track of it at least for an hour a month because that's what I would highly suggest everybody and anybody do. But to his question, seven to ten percent, and then look on the back end. And this is another thing that I have conversations with people will be like, "Well, yeah, you say appreciation, but you know, I can't really see it." I'm like, "Oh, okay, so you're going to just go buy in the in the the uh, war zones then, right? Because you don't have to worry about your appreciation then, right? No, no. Well, then appreciation means something. Well, what happens when you do want to sell three or five years down the road? Yeah, the appreciation means something, right? Um, last year we were hitting about 14 to 15 percent in Charlotte, as an example. Um, if I remember correctly, Aaron Indy was hitting around um, eight percent or nine percent for appreciation. Uh, Kansas City was like seven to nine percent. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's that's you got to know what your number is. So it's a great question. You got to know what your number is and you're comfortable with. Mine's seven percent or better, but I also know that I'm going to make 15 to 20 percent of my money every year um, doing my single family houses. Good. Wendy is asking, are there trailers in Idaho? You said six to six fifty a month. Is that net or is that gross? Um, for the for the trailers, is that what she said? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, in Idaho, I don't know exactly what the numbers are for rents. I know what my trailer park rents are here. Um, I would give you an example um, for the rent. So if, I, if I'm renting for six fifty, um, actually about 
250 of that's going to be lot rent and then the remainder is going to be um, for the actual trailer itself um, what we do is we have 10 percent management fee i even hit myself for my management fee um, because you can't grow your business unless you also if you own a restaurant if you're not buying your food you're stealing from yourself in my opinion right i've owned restaurants in the past so it's the same with this business um, i take 10 percent out just like i do all of my investors to make sure that they're taken care of and honestly if you've ever property managed 10 percent is not enough I promise so did i answer the question don yes i think so so awesome. what if somebody can't travel to indy because of the virus and okay. what are the dates again okay actually and i just remembered a part two that i didn't actually answer from her so if you take out the 10 percent you're figuring you're gonna, you know, out of 60. So I'll give you a perfect example. If you have a thousand dollar rent coming in, by the time it's said and done, you've paid your taxes because our taxes are really low here. And actually in all of our markets, our taxes are pretty darn low compared to a lot of cities and states. Um, you take out, you know, maintenance, if there's any maintenance, any vacancy over a year to your time frame, um, you're, you know, you're probably gonna wind up out of a thousand bucks. You're gonna be out of pocket probably 150, uh, tops probably 200 bucks. So you're still walking with $800. So you're looking at around a, probably about an 8% return on your cash by the time you've purchased it and done all of your things, okay. which is really strong. Yeah. Okay, so somebody wants to go to Indy but is worried about traveling right now. What are the yep. dates and and what do they do if they don't want to travel? Um, the dates are, we've got May 22nd through the 24th. Hold on one second, bear with me. I'm trying to do something here. Was it on your PowerPoint? It it's um it is not, I don't no, it is not. Okay. I can put that in the chat screen. Uh and, and by the way, if you Perfect. go to protectwealth.com slash indie, all the dates are there. Uh, I didn't put May on there, but uh, if you click through uh, to register, you actually will see all the dates there, all the way going to Perfect. October. And then here's cool. what I have. May 22nd through the 24th. <laughs> there you go. So, hopefully that helps. so if, if you can there get there, so this is a great question. So we do a lot of stuff with international investors and also investors uh, that, of course, want to keep buying houses with us, have bought or have heard us do this before, and they ask the same question. So what, we're, what we've been doing, especially with Corona, because we always said that you had to come to Indy before you could buy. So what we're doing now um, is – my wife and uh, sidekick and also somebody in Indy actually will go out and do walkthroughs in houses after you've talked to Megan. So they'll do a live walkthrough with you or a recorded walkthrough so you can see the house. So Megan would say, hey, here's a couple houses. Is one or one of these or three of these or all these, which ones would, would be best for you? Let us know, you know, if you're gonna buy three, pick three. If you're gonna buy one, pick one. And then what we can do is we can actually go and I can have one of my project managers, myself, whatever, whoever, to go and actually walk through the property so you can actually see the work um, and see what we do. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, a little little virtual tour of the properties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and it's, been, and it's been working. Our international investors, especially from uh, China and Japan, have definitely loved it. So it's, it's great. Okay. Will is asking if the – if this is being recorded and so Kendall, will you chirp, chirp in on that? Yep, so what we'll do is we'll uh, actually send the recording out. If you registered and attended uh, the webinar, we will send you the recording generally, usually tomorrow afternoon, once it's all compressed and ready to go. Awesome. Okay, Sue is asking, what do you think about HTE lease option market with COVID? I don't understand the question, maybe you do. But HTE, HTE. I'm not sure what that is. I don't HTE. know what that is either. Yeah, she can. Sue, maybe tell you me. can clarify that a little bit. Okay, yeah. Charlotte is asking, and do you Great have man. some examples of inventory? You have price points, rents, ROI. We do. We do. We we have we definitely do. Um, and if Don and Kendall would like to share the site, or if I, however you guys want to do it. Um, they, there's actually, um, you can go to a site and check it out. Kendall can, can talk to you about that. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, Dark or, Sue was or saying probably was, talk to Megan on that. Yes, yeah. Megan definitely. And Megan will, will hook you up and tell you where you can go. You can go look at stuff, um, and be taken care of. 
for sure, 100%. Yeah, and there are examples on that link. To click that link, protectwealth.com slash any. Awesome. There are, there are uh, uh, examples there. Don, Sue, Sue the, the, it wasn't HTE. What do you think about the lease option market with COVID? That was the question, sorry. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay, so I have to I have to say this. As Don said, I'm not an attorney or anything or an accountant or CPA. Um, so the state of North Carolina makes it very difficult to do any lease options. So I don't do any, uh, perfectly honest. Now, what happened in 08, um, you are about to have a tsunami of lease option opportunities. You're going to have a tsunami of um, wraparound mortgages. You're going to have a tsunami of subject twos that you're going to be able to do. I would highly, highly suggest that you sit down with an attorney before you start to do any of these things because states are coming down big time on us investors. Um, and you want to be very careful and cautious about what you do and make sure you've spoke to an attorney about it. And I'm telling you from my own perspective, I call my attorney. I'm like, dude, what is going on with this lease option stuff? Because back in 2011, they changed um, our amazingly brilliant um, congressional body of North Carolina decided that lease options should pretty much be gone and wiped out and wrong, along with subject twos and wraparounds. And it made it so I couldn't help people that couldn't make their bills anymore. So they kind of kicked themselves in the butt for that one. But it is what it is. So I personally think it's going to be an amazing time to be able to do those types of things if you know how to do them, if you've got the right team, and if you know your market and you know how to negotiate. Um, you know, and also you're going to be a landlord. So remember that. Um, people tell me, well, people tell me gurus are saying that if you do lease options, you don't have to deal with much of the tenant. I was like, you want your money, you're going to be dealing with some tenants. I don't care who it is. If it, it, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. But yeah, so that should answer your question. Okay, our time's about up, but let's hit just a couple more questions. What's the lifespan of a trailer before you have to replace it? Uh, great question. It depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to me, I've got 1960s trailers still left, and I just have to go take the rivets on the outside. Trust me, I've done it. And replace the interior walls with wood and with insulation, and then you're done. Uh, they can last forever. Um, the roof is the most important part because if water gets in a trailer, it destroys the, the particle board that it's made of, which is pretty much sand dust, uh, which is absolutely nothing if it's water. Um, now, if you're talking to a bank, a bank gives the shelf life of 20 years for a trailer. Um, that is how uh, that's how they will lend to you is 20 years. Um, and remember, it is not a piece of real estate. It is a vehicle. It has a VIN number just like your car does. Unless it's attached to the property, right? Unless you get it attached to the property, correct. And now Florida, you can actually, you get to tell Florida what you want it to be, if you want it to be real property or if you want it to stay personal property as a car. Cool. What's the minimum investment required to, to be for passive investors? Great question. Um, so if you're wanting to invest with us, which I think would be brilliant, um, 75,000 is what we, what we want you to at least have be able to get your mitts on um, before you come out uh, because we're 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 putting a lot of cash out and a lot of time for you to come and visit so we, that's all that we ask is that you have that 75,000 um, or whatever amount we do stuff with people that have millions of dollars or 1031 exchanges um, you know that we help get into some amazing deals but that could be you know 40,000 out of my IRA and 35 out of my wife's and we partner on a deal or uh, there are partnerships that you 100 percent yeah 100 percent yeah i mean we've got people that do all kinds of deals different ways um it might be a husband and wife's iras going by half and half uh you know somebody in your family a friend um whoever who whatever uh just to to make it happen so yeah however you can come up with a 75 is completely you know for me um i pulled out a lot of my cash in october out of the market thank god um, and I know people are making money, but I'm, more people have lost money than, than made. Um, you know, I wanted to just get it out. I'm like, yeah, I've got, and I had just picked up a new trailer park. I'm like, I'm just going to put it, put this into a couple trailers. So that's where I put my money. Um, so I think you know, it's, a, it's a great investment. Okay, good. What's the typical price range you offer to get rent? Uh, if you're looking for rent of 800 to 1100 a month, what's uh -huh. the typical price range? Um, you're looking at between, depending on what city you're in, 
um, you're looking at purchase from 75,000 up to, I mean, if you wanted uh, something in Charlotte, you can go all the way up to 145,000. Just depends on which markets you like. I always tell people, I'm like, you know, if you like Kansas City, Indy, and Charlotte, buy one house in each, and now you get to travel around. Don's going to teach you how to do that so that it doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> right? All right. Don's yep. We can do that. Yep. Exactly. What are the major risks with trailer parks? Well, major risks, just like anything. I mean, it can be burned down, but you can insure it. Um, most of the stuff is covered by insurance. The risks are uh, tornadoes. I guess um, out of you know all the parks that we have, I had one of my parks get hit by a tornado and went by the side. I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, really, there, there's not a downside. I don't, I don't see. Um, just make sure that your septic tanks have been tested, wells have been tested. If it's on septic and well, uh, it's the it's the least expensive thing to fix. Um, a, a, the hardware on a sink in the bathroom is seven dollars. It's not seventy like a Delta faucet. So there's not a, there's really not a lot of downside. Uh, you just got to make sure you put them in a place. Um, you know, if you have an RV park, that's a little different because I want to have a destination if I have an RV park. Um, so if I'm in Asheville, two hours away in the mountains where it's just absolutely beautiful, you know, I, I would do a, do a park there. I could do half RV and half manufactured homes. And the difference between mobile, like a, a trailer and manufactured is, if it's before 1976, it's actually considered a trailer. And if it's after 1976, it's HUD certified, HUD gave certification. So that means that it's a manufactured home and not a trailer. Okay, got it. Well, the, the biggest problem that I've seen with investors, they don't want to ever live in a mobile home, so they don't think it's a good investment. What yeah. I really like about mobile homes is you can learn how to flip, you can learn how to negotiate, you learn the buy sell and earnest money agreements, you learn all of the all of the things with with less zeros. Yeah, and so no, for agreed. people that are trying to get into real estate, mobile homes is like the perfect avenue to, to get the yeah, introduction. Again, again, you're at the lowest bar of entry, guys, right? And the real estate realm is pretty much trailers, right? And that's not even really a real estate unless you do put it on something, right? Connect it. So put that in your head. Um, it's affordable. It's always going to be filled as long as it's partially livable. Ours are all very nice. We do turns when somebody moves out. They're really great. Um, but that's the biggest thing is, guys, if, if you only have $1,000, you can go and flip a trailer right now. I, I mean, seriously, you could go flip a trailer. You might have to find somebody to lend you a couple grand to, to go and rehab it. But if you had 5K, you could easily pick up a trailer. I mean, you can wholesale a $1,000 trailer. I've done it. I've done it a bunch of times, actually. So I'll pick up a trailer. We got a trailer right now that we just, here, I'll give a perfect example. Uh, double wide, we picked it up for uh, eighty four thousand. It's worth one forty. This is a double wide trailer. It's worth one forty, and we just had somebody. We're going to wholesale it. We just don't want to deal with it because uh, it's a little bit further out of town, uh, more in the way suburbs, and we're selling it for nine. I think we got it. We we did eighty five or eighty six, and we're selling it for. I think we just got an offer of like ninety seven. And we we got that this week with a pay per, pay per click ad. Go figure. Google, you gotta love them, you know. So it's it's insane. So trailers are great. I mean, Don, again, right there from the question. I I don't I don't see any negatives. I mean, it's just the kind of negatives that you have with a house, but you can replace a trailer for like nothing, right? I mean, think about it. You have a brand new house for 40k. You can't build something the same square footage as a trailer anywhere USA. And I can build cheap. And I can't even get close to what a trailer I can do a trailer for to just roll it out there. And more, most importantly, get the same amount of rent as a house, depending on what park or area that it's located. Wow, we're getting a lot more questions. We really, we really have to cut this off. So let's yeah. go ten more minutes. But um, and I know you're you're pretty late on the East Coast. It's How it's ten. Yeah, I was going to point out, Don. What's that? We have property. We have properties too. Just to point out, Don and I also have properties too. I don't know if a lot of people on the call know that. That know Don and I. Right. It's been been fantastic. I'm glad I'm in real estate right now. No doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I got my rent coming in. I mean, it's it's amazing. It pays my bills. Um, that it's the best feeling you could ever have is have 
purely passive income that pays all of your bills and much more. It's phenomenal. If you haven't had it, you need to try it really soon. One more question or a couple more questions. What you got, Don? Um, Robert's asking, are you familiar with the Baltimore market? I am. Uh, I will not. I used to be. Let me put it that way. Um, I used whenever I used to travel up to Baltimore, I used to go up there a couple every couple months. Um, it's going to be the same as everywhere, to be, in my opinion, to be honest, because you you've got some war zones there. Um, you know, just like everywhere has. Uh, you just got to figure out where you want to go. Um, you know, the hardest part of the business, in my opinion, is property management by far. Construction is right behind that, but property management is it is the armpit of everything. And that's why we we have, I think, almost 3,000 doors between all of us, between all of our different markets, even the ones that we don't buy in anymore, but we've got 3,000 units. Um, but Baltimore, I mean, it can be a great market. I'm sure that you can wholesale your pants off if you want to make quick cash. I don't know if I'd be doing any flips there. Um, I probably wouldn't. But definitely, if you wanted to wholesale, yeah, I mean, you can make money. I mean, the biggest thing is, is see how quick you can make cash so that you can go buy rental properties. Whether it's with us or not, it's totally up to you, of course. But we, we want you to go and actually have a different life. You know, whether, again, whether you get stuff with us or not, with Alpine, I, I mean, that that's great if you do. We'd love to have you be a part of our tribe and our family. But we just want you to have some freedom in your life, finally. That's the biggest piece. Okay. Um, your management fee, I think you mentioned 10%. Correct. Okay. Um, what's your opinion of a separate house or one, one house, but renting individual rooms, like a five bedroom house? Like a boarding, possibly. like a boarding house. Yeah. Like, like a boarding yeah. house. So, um, I've got, I, I've done one of those in the past. Um, I've got a buddy that that's all he does. Well, on occasion we'll do a flip and a couple wholesale deals a month, but his main gig is boarding houses, like what you're asking me. Um, he does pilots and, um, you know, all the, the air crew. So right now he ain't doing so great, but he's just got to get different people in there. He said that he hasn't had any problem, thank God, because he feels that it's a high, he wanted to get into the uh, working and moderate income. So that's what he did with his boarding houses. He's got, God, seven of them, I think, something like that. And so he's probably... He's bringing in a good bit of money. He's told me, he's like, yeah, I'm bringing in blah. And I was like, damn, that's not bad, man. Good for you. But let me explain one thing to you. It is management intensive. And to me, that's why I got rid of the one that I had back in the day, because I'm just like, I can't, I can't deal with these people anymore. Cause it was, since they're only a door doorknob away, everybody was fighting constantly. And, you know, I had halfway decent people in there, I thought, and it just didn't work out. But it's it's definitely doable. You just got to make sure that you have either you're a great manager and you better not wear your heart on your sleeve because you'll get eaten alive. Well, that's property management anyways. Um, and yeah, that's one of the reasons why we do that for everybody so that you don't have to deal with it. It's like having roommates with a shared kitchen, oh a shared God. living room, shared bathrooms. Oh, my gosh. I, I can't imagine. Yeah, it's, but, it's not. But fun. you get more rents out of the, out of the same house. You, you do. So I mean, so I, I'll give you an example. Uh, my buddy is getting, I think, uh, what was he? Because what they would do is they'd have like a couple sturdises or whatever. Um, they'd have like four per room, and they were all ones that travel from different cities. So you have, you know, since Charlotte's a hub for American, you have one coming in from Dallas, one from Phoenix, one from JFK. Uh, and one from LaGuardia. So, you know, you have all these different people. So they would just take a room and they would set their schedule, however the heck they do it. I don't know. And then he gave food. He put food in the fridge. He paid for internet and he paid for, I think, a Roku or um, uh, Apple TV, one or the other. And it, he, he loves it. Uh, but I'm not in his daily. So I, I don't know if I can believe it or not, to be honest. And I've known him for 20 years. <laughs> and it's just so hard. I'm telling you, this is so hard to manage. Travis, how many years you've been investing? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. There you go. How yeah. do you find good uh, deals on trailer trailers and or let's not even go to trailer parks? We don't have enough time. How do you find right. good deals on trailers? Good deals on anything, honestly. Um, if if you've got the money to be able to do, uh, like I've always told people, if people ask me all the time, like, well, if I only have five thousand dollars, you know, I can't buy a house with you yet, but what can I do? I'd say. Go and spend 2000 of it and put it into a huge marketing budget, and I'll tell you what to put it in, right? So driving for dollars is going to be one of the best things, especially for trails and trailer parks. Um, I can go on 
to a couple of different software subscript like subscriptions that I have, and I can pull all the trailer parks in pretty much all everywhere in the United States. So I can go on there and do that, and go drive by them, call them, talk to the uh, manager of it, see how you, see if they have any trailers that are for sale, um, and see if they'll let investors do trailers in that specific park. As an example, since you'd asked the park question, but there's no difference. I do the same with apartments. I do the same with storage facilities. I do the same with land and dirt. I, I drive a lot. I put on my my little rover gets lots of miles put on it every single day. I mean, hundreds of miles a day, uh, because I've, that's how I find my houses. That's how I find deals. And plus, appointments are the biggest thing. Um, if you really want to do something and buy something from somebody, don't just do it over the phone. When you get in front of them. Me personally, I get in front of somebody, I got them closed. I mean, seriously, because I'm there, I actually care. They see how much I empathize and sympathize with them because I care. I've been through hell and back in my lifetime of 45 years. So, you know, if you go in the same way and you do have your heart on your sleeve, you will always win with these people. And if you can't make money on it, you can at least help them get out of a bad situation, no matter if it's a trailer, park, or a house, or multi. How easy is it for somebody to get a loan on a trailer park? Very difficult. <laughs> Good luck. And, and let, so my park that I showed you the first time, I sold that about yep. three or four years later because a heart surgeon came along with cash and said he'd buy it. And he made me an offer. I could, like Godfather of the movie, he made me an offer I could not refuse. I was like, yes, I'll take that today. Yes. And we closed it in a week. He actually, since he was a heart surgeon, he was able to walk into the bank. They gave him 100% financing on the trailer. It's not, it's not, it's it's doable, but it's not easy. Um, you want to call around and talk to your local, depending on how big it is. Talk to your local banks. Um, everybody on here should go, in my opinion, and be with a local bank uh, because they're going to help you the most um, over time with situations like right now. Even like my bank's helping me a lot, and I because you know I've got I've got all my employees. So heck yeah, I'm going to put in for SBA, right? I got my SBA thing. Uh, yesterday from PPP, which is amazing. So now I can, I, I've got my payroll covered, right? So it, it makes it a whole lot different, but that's because I have a great relationship with a small bank and they were able to go into the front of the line, apparently, and it happened and it worked. Okay. A lot of the questions that you guys um, are asking about return rates and vacancy rates and everything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer those. Um, call us and, and set an appointment and talk to Megan and let her walk you through uh, the specifics on each market and help her let her help you. you she's not she's she's really more customer service. What yeah. what are your goals? What is it you're looking for? And let's find the right properties in the right markets that meet your needs. And so rather than have Travis ask, ask those questions. I think I'm going to refer those, that to Megan. Kendall, will you put up the website one more time if they're interested in coming to Indy or looking at these properties? Sure. Will you type that in? Where right you there. type that in? It's on the screen. Oh, you yep. see it? Oh, yep. there you go. Okay, perfect. And those offers yeah, are right. going to Indy. It's only available uh, for the next little bit, right? Because we don't know how full it's going to be Correct. Right, as far as hotel and stuff. Yes. Yeah, with with the ones that they've canceled, I know that there's high demand for the the. I'm not sure about May whether that's actually going to happen, but the ones after that, we're pretty certain of. Because we had so many people that wanted to register to come for May, he's he actually had two on the books, and we're we're still waiting to see what the heck they're going to do. But June is going to be absolutely slammed because <laughs> people have been waiting for now. You know, by that time, two three months, it's like. Uh, guys, we can't have all of y'all here. So that's gonna be a, that's a real thing. Like I'm telling you, it's not a ploy. I promise. Like we get slammed. It's a great problem. All right. And uh, for for those of you that we didn't get a chance to answer your questions, why don't sure. you type us uh, or write us a, a question? We'll we'll pass it on to to Travis if we can. Sure. Um, my email Don P at assetfoundation.com or you can all go to that registration you can write to Kendall tomorrow Kendall what's your email address Kendall B so K E N D A L B as in Bravo at protectwealth.com happy to help
All right, but we do have to cut this off and give Travis his evening back. Travis, any other closing statements before you close tonight? Oh, guys, the biggest thing is, you know, there's a lot of craziness happening right now. I get it. We all feel it. It, it It's not, it, it sucks. I mean, plain and simple, right? Um, all I can tell you is stay together as a group and we'll all make it through. And then hopefully we'll, we'll get to see you guys in Indy real soon. Um, you know, we would love to have you guys come share the weekend with us, learn a ton. Um, whether you get something with us, great. If you don't, that's great too, but we'd love to have you. It'd be a, it'd be a blast. I promise you, you will learn more in that weekend than anything that you've ever done. And I mean that. Yeah. Highly educational. And, and a couple of weeks ago, we had Mike Koval on here talking about yeah. the stock market. I believe that there are certain stocks that are going to go up. Um, 100%. But I also, I totally love real estate because it is hard. I can touch it. I can yep. feel it. It's not going anywhere. They're not building any more of it. it yep. It's, I, I like having, especially when the economy is at risk, I like having a diversified portfolio with heavy on the real estate side. If you're, if you're concerned about that, if you're new at this, if you've got a little bit of money that you're ready to invest, uh, especially passively, um, try to get on a plane and, and get dirt, drive yeah. over to Indy, but be to, be to one of those classes. Yeah, you'll absolutely fall in love with with the class, with everybody. You'll get to you know get to know Don and Kendall a lot more. They're there the whole entire time, the whole entire weekend. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, we even karaoke. Yeah. So if you if you're a singer like myself. <laughs> I'm just saying, it happens. I'll belt out a few tunes now and then. Um, you can come and join me and Aaron um, and whomever else might be up there and Becca and sing with us. It's really fun. It's a good time. Right. Travis well, has there skills. We go. He has major skills. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, every, everyone. Travis, thank you very much for your time. And for all of you that have been on the call, thank you. Have a great, great evening. And please, please stay safe. Thanks, Thanks for being guys. with us. Have, have a great night. night. Thank you, Travis.